Today on 20TV Insider, elementary students receive a new spin on drug and violence education. In Rockrimmon, kids spend a day turning recyclables into a whole new world. In sports, district soccer teams continue to roll through the postseason. Plus, see how the Rampart football team has moved into contention for the state playoffs. You're watching 20TV Insider from Academy School District 20. Hello and welcome to 20 TV Insider, your weekly look into events in Academy School District 20. I'm Brian German. Thanks for joining us today. Attending a school on a military base definitely has its perks, as students at Douglas Valley Elementary found out. As part of Red Ribbon Week, students were treated to a special visit by an Army National Guard helicopter. The crew landed just outside the school and delivered red ribbons to each of the students. It's part of a nationwide week of drug and violence prevention awareness in schools. In the classroom, the school is also helping students focus on making healthy choices. Douglas Valley Principal Doug Piper says the helicopter was a special treat to help students kick off Red Ribbon Week. What a unique opportunity for our kids to be able to come out here, get a reminder, a red ribbon, to stay drug free and also have a helicopter land at their school. It's just a wonderful opportunity for us. The helicopter landed at four other schools in El Paso County to help them celebrate the special week. Students at Rock Rimmon Elementary recently used their imagination to create some masterpieces as part of the Global Cardboard Challenge. The event is inspired by the movie Kane's Arcade, in which a young boy creates an arcade made completely out of cardboard in his dad's shop. After watching the movie and seeing how big a sensation this became for that community, kids from all over the world have started to come together for a day of innovative play to see what they can build using cardboard, other recycled materials, and a little imagination. Working in groups, this is a way for the students to get out of the classroom, to enjoy themselves, and to think outside the box. I think they like um, the freedom. I mean, it's fun, and they get to be creative, and they get to be innovative. And watching them here, they're just enjoying themselves so much. They get to be at school creating and taking their own ideas and working together with friends. A lot of them are working in groups. The Cardboard Challenge is presented by the Imagination Foundation and celebrates child creativity and the role communities play in fostering that creativity. Rock Rim and students are also helping part of the community recover from the Waldo Canyon fire. The students have been volunteering at Flying W Ranch as part of a service project. All but two buildings on that property were destroyed during the fire in 2012. In an effort to rehabilitate the area, students joined ranch staff and firefighters to help get the ranch back into working order. Second grade teacher Christy Webb says each grade is working on a different part of the project. Some of the younger groups are working with spreading the mulch. Today we're actually getting it into the trucks. Probably fourth and fifth grade will be spreading it to help hold the soil in place. The work by Rock Rim and students will help the ranch reopen to the public within the next few years. Well, every year in October, thousands of people head to the north side of Colorado Springs for the thrills and chills of Halloween. 20 TV student Julie Henninger shows us why the Haunted Mines have been so successful. The Haunted Mines, located at the Mining Museum off of Northgate, is a volunteer-run haunted house, scaring people into the right mood for Halloween. The Haunted Mines is a non-profit organization, where all the funds earned from ticket sales go back to the museum, as well as other organizations like the Red Cross. The house is solely run by volunteers who sign up to help sell tickets or scare customers, either in line or in the house. Sebastian Smith explains why he enjoys volunteering at the mines. I just like scaring people and being part of haunted houses. Haunted houses are like my thing. The amount of people attending per night usually ranges from about 200 to 2,000. They are anticipating around 30,000 visitors for the season. Job Ferris tells us what it takes to make a scary haunted house. You know, it takes a lot of heart. <laughs> the, the, that's the odd thing to, that kind of you know makes it mesh real well. Uh, mostly, you just got to care about what you're doing, care about getting those scares, and uh, care about the stories that you get to tell other people. The haunted mines have been ranked number one this year on haunted house reviewing websites and continue to exceed expectations. This is the final week for the Haunted Mines. They are open from Wednesday through Saturday night at 7 p.m. Well, the Rampart football team's record this past few years has been pretty frightful. When 20TV Insider returns, see how the Rams have been able to sneak up on some teams this season. Plus, three District 20 boys soccer teams are in the second round of the playoffs. We'll preview their matchups next. They said I couldn't dream called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Ooh. 
said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. You're watching 20 TV Insider from Academy School District 20. Welcome back to 20 TV Insider. As the reigning state champions, the Pine Creek boys soccer team had a goal to make it back to the playoffs and defend their title. Now that they've reached that goal, they're just focused on winning each and every game. In the first round, the number seven Eagles took on Fort Collins High School, getting fired up before this one. And off the throw in early, it goes into Yaya Cisse. He's the star for the Eagles. He gets the goal. It's one to nothing, Pine Creek. Cisse actually had another chance later off the corner kick. He gets up there, just can't get his foot on the ball. It remains one to nothing. The Lampkins would strike back. Jake Rudell gets a header of his own, but he's ruled offsides on the play. No goal. No goal. Wipe it off. It's still one nothing, Pine Creek. Frankie Hernandez had six saves on the night. It's a one to nothing shutout. The Eagles will now host the Legend Titans on Wednesday night. That game at 6 o'clock as the number seven seed, Pine Creek, the second highest team left in their part of the bracket. Well, the Air Academy boys soccer team has been led by senior Austin Dewing. Heading into the first round game against Thompson Valley, Dewing had scored 28 goals in 15 games. He wouldn't have to do it all by himself against the Eagles. David Louthen would step up here off the corner kick. Look at Louthen, the big man, get up and head it down. One to nothing, Kadets in the lead. But that wasn't all for Mr. Louthen. Later on, as it got darker, Louthen again in the center, again uses the head to put it home. Two nothing, Kadets. Thompson Valley would cut into that lead. Lucas Beal with a nice move, gets it by the goaltender, makes it two to one, Kadets, but uh, no worries, folks. Austin doing. One of his two goals on the night, the Cadets win by a final score of 6-2. to two. The Cadets will now host Pueblo Centennial on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock. The Bulldogs beat Windsor 2-0 in their first round game. The TCA Titans are the number two seed in 4A. As the only other undefeated team in the state, they're hoping to make it to the championship game and possibly take on Air Academy. But first, they had to get through Vista Prep in the opening round of the playoffs. Jeremy Balds. Gets it to Jaden Borja, and it's TCA six minutes into the game, up one to nothing. Second half, Titus Grant gets on the board. He's done that plenty of times this year from 20 yards out, making it two to nothing. And then Andrew Peck. I'll take another goal. Three nothing. The Titans can run away with the win. They will now host the 15th seed, Pueblo West. That on Tuesday night at 6 o'clock, the Cyclones beat Skyline three to two in the first round, and the winner advances to the quarterfinals. After a big win against the Rampart Rams for the 5A Colorado Springs Metro League Championship, the Pine Creek Eagles finished out their season with a couple of non-conference games in the volleyball set. Thursday night, they hosted Fruita Monument. The Eagles had no trouble with those Wildcats. They won 25-17, 25-21, and 25-20 to sweep the match. Alyssa Brinton finished with 16 kills and 18 digs to lead Pine Creek to that 3-0 sweep. The Eagles will now move on to the postseason and they will host a regional in the 5A state tournament. Joining them is Liberty High School, who's the 36th seed in Region 1 with Eagle Crest and Thunder Ridge. In Region 4, Rampart, the overall number 4 seed, they will host Mountain Vista and Fort Collins. And in Region 6, there you see Pine Creek hosting Denver East and Heritage. In 4A, three more District 20 teams made the state tournament. The Classical Academy is the 24 seed. They will travel to Lewis Palmer to take on the Rangers and Weld Central. Discovery Canyon qualified for state for the first time ever. Way to go, Thunder. They are the 32 seed. They travel to Valor Christian along with Thomas Jefferson. And Air Academy is the 12 seed. They will host in the first round. They welcome in Eagle Valley and Pueblo East. Matches for both 4 and 5A will be held on Saturday. Well, the Pine Creek football team has been a juggernaut this year in defending their state championship in 4A football. The Eagles still undefeated, hadn't given up any points in their previous two games heading into Saturday's matchup versus the Rampart Rams. The Eagles 
easy going early on. This is Josh Odom from 18 yards out. He runs it in one of his four touchdowns on the day. It was 7-0 Pine Creek. Pine Creek did have some trouble, though. Some tough Rampart defense forces a fumble. The Rams came up with it but couldn't score when they got down to a goal-to-go situation. Tommy Lazaro hits JoJo Doman later in the half, and he scores 14 to nothing. Nice somersault in the end zone. Then Lazaro on the ground. No one there to hand it off to. Well, let me try and run that way. Nope, I'm going to back it up and run around the right-hand side and go in easily for the touchdown. 21 nothing Eagles. Fourth quarter, Pine Creek was up 42 to nothing. But Parker Humphrey went to the air and found Donovan Oldham. Nice catch by the big man in the end zone. Too little, too late. Pine there. Creek wins it, 42-10. We now welcome 20 TV reporter Kara Hammer. And uh, Kara, despite that loss, Rampart has had a pretty good year. A really good year and a lot of big changes for them, including first-year head coach Rob Royer. But the big changes in the offseason are definitely paying off for them this year. The Rampart Rams are sending their seniors out on a different note. With their first winning season since 2004, the Rams are now 6-3 and 3-1 and three and one in league play. You know, all I know is what we've done this year, and the kids have responded to the change in culture that we've asked them to do. And the change started with first-year head coach Rob Royer. After a loss at Discovery Canyon in late September, the Rams went on a three-game winning streak before falling to Pine Creek. Every time we go out, win or lose, we, you know, we try to use that as kind of a learning opportunity for the kids. And, you, know, you know, unfortunately for us, that was a big learning opportunity. Royer is a coach that is bringing this team together a teacher in the classroom, and on the field. I'm really proud of how they've come together as a team. You know, they, they've, they've gelled together, they're respected in the school, people are proud to see them and what they've done. Um, we've worked hard about their academics and their athletics. But the biggest test for Rampart came against the defending state champs. It's a rivalry. You know, it's another backyard brawl with one of our District 20 neighbors. And, you know, it's, it's grown into a big rivalry between the two schools. So. But even with their first league loss, Rampart is closing out their regular season with a winning record. We've seen adversity every single game, and, and their ability to kind of respond to that adversity is, is one of the keys to you know, our success right now. Brian, Rampart is ranked 14th in 4A in the top 16, make it to state. They have a game this Friday against Durango. And that's a winnable game for the Rampart Rams. Definitely. Hopefully they'll pull that one out. The Discovery Canyon football team is also sitting at 9-0 this season and currently ranked as the number one team in 3A. The Thunder hosted Lewis Palmer Friday night in a 3A Southern League matchup. Spencer Chambers, as usual when DCC plays, gets on the board. This a nine-yard touchdown run. He had two on the night. Nine carries, 63 yards. Thunder up 7-0. Then Andrew Hall goes to the air. Nice little quick toss to Scott Betzer. His only catch of the night, but it counts for six points. Tack on the extra point. And then Andrew Hall. A rushing touchdown. He threw for two, ran for this one. DCC wins easy, 45-14. to They'll travel to Canyon City on Friday for league championship game against the Tigers. Well, the Pine Creek Rampart football game was our final live 20 TV broadcast of the fall sports season. But don't fret, we have our winner schedule coming out soon. Our first live broadcast is December 1st with Discovery Canyon taking on Denver South in girls basketball. We'll be doing 19 live broadcasts, including a hockey doubleheader and two basketball doubleheaders. For the full schedule, head to our website at asd20.org 20tvsports. If you have ideas or topics that you would like us to cover, give us a call at 719-234-1780, or you can send us an email at 20tv at asd20.org. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week on 20 TV Insider. Oh! Checking your fantasy league? Nah, just my 401k statement. Mm, nice. Where'd you find the money for that? I've just been saving a little every month. <laughs> I can't seem to save anything. Well, what about all this? What about the money you're spending? <laughs> what money? It's gone before I can get my hands on it. I got a pizza for a uh, Todd. Hey, can somebody spot me? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. It's 547. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. One part excellence. One part inspiration. One part preparation. Or outstanding.